Hello everybody. This is a, a new banjo I just finished up making. It's a wood top banjo. This doesn't really even sound like a banjo. It sounds more like a dulcimer. Which is what, uh, that's how wood top banjos sound like. But it plays just like a regular five string banjo. The rim is uh, 14 sides. It was supposed to be 16 sides. But, uh, I guess my arithmetic was off, or uh, my table saw measurements were off, something. The wood I used had been out in the garage since I moved, before I moved in here 19 years ago, and that wasn't exactly straight. I got it as straight as I could, but uh, so that might have thrown it off a little bit. But through dumb luck, 14 size worked. <laughs> so I, I glued it all together, you know, after I made the angle cuts. I just put out a long strip of duct tape, put glue in between each each one of these uh, things, laid them down on the duct tape right next to each other, and then wrapped it around, used that for a clamp. And uh, the top is a Baltic birch plywood top. I sanded the top down very thin, as thin as I could to get the best possible sound. I had it right where I wanted it, and then at the end, I was kind of rushing, and when I was staining over here on the side, I accidentally got some wood, I mean some stain on top of the wood, so I had to sand it down more, and that's where that happened. A boo-boo there. Nothing structural, just doesn't look very good. These upholstery tacks uh, are just for decoration. It really doesn't have much to do at all with holding it in. I use tight bond glue to glue the top onto the rim. It's a compensated bit bridge there. It's a mandolin tailpiece. That dumb looking sticker there I had to put there because you're not going to believe this. The very last thing I did, I was trying to screw in a, a banjo strap. So in case I wanted to use a strap at some point or whoever down the road would play this. But I broke off not one screw not two screws but three screw <laughs> three screws if you can believe that so i think this wood is, this is a obviously a very hard wood that's why i'm thinking it's probably maple anyway i guess that wasn't just that wasn't meant to be but anyway uh, on the inside i put the uh, x bracing for support and sound distribution and this is a really interesting there those two lag bolts that's what's holding the neck that's those two lag bolts are the only thing holding the neck on to the uh, rim there's no glue at all and those are slotted uh, the lag screws are going into slots so if you wanted to uh, lower your string action to get the strings as low as possible you can unloosen those screws and just uh, push the neck down a little bit and then tighten it back up. Or if you got a, some string buzzing going on, you can raise the neck a little bit. As far as I know, no one ever made a banjo like that. I could be wrong. But um, I think that's really a, a come in handy. Although I've got the string action pretty low now, as you can see. it's I might be able to come down some yet. But it's pretty low right now. It's comfortable to play, real easy to play. Those are tombstone tuners from CB Giddy. I like those. I use those I use those on all my other banjos. They stay in tune really well. It has a zero fret nut here. And these are uh copper coated uh medium frets and I put a sticker on there uh, for the 12th fret there is no truss rod uh, but these are extra light steel strings and I might switch over to uh, nile gut strings I have a slight intonation problem which you probably heard in the song that I was playing on the G string I've been working on it and it's getting better but it's still a problem. I don't think I would do much recording with this because of that, unless I can fix it. But if I put nylon strings on there, that would, I wouldn't have that problem for some reason. 
nylon strings are a little thicker so they're a little closer to the fret so when you push down on it you don't have as far to go and when you push down it goes sharp that's what's doing it anyway I put a compensated saddle on here to try to help with that and it did help a little bit but I'm still working on it yeah the neck is pop made out of poplar wood and it's uh, it's got a nice thick feel to it a lot of the banjos you buy off the shelf have really skinny necks which I do not care for myself uh, darn I don't think you can see it very good so this has a nice thickness to it it's not un it's very very comfortable to play also at the nut it has a wider nut width the banjos you buy off the shelf in the stores or online uh, are about an inch and a quarter this one is almost an inch and a half just much easier to play the strings are a little bit further apart I want to talk about the stain and I think I don't mean to pat myself on the back and I'm not but I want to share it with woodworkers out there be what I'm trying to say is poplar wood and maple wood which is what I think the rim is made out of is very prone to blotching the way most people try to prevent blotching is they put on a coat of wood conditioner or a cut coat of shellac to seal in the woods so you get a more even stain the problem with that is it doesn't always work especially on poplar wood and maple wood or pine any of your soft woods I think I've come up with a revolutionary technique and I hope that does, I don't I hope that's not hyperbole but I really believe I really have here and I'll tr I want to explain it to you and I'm gonna make a separate video after I do some more testing to see you know over the long term how this holds up but what I did is I used a full cut of shellac right out of the can I put it over the whole banjo then I used uh, after that dried and I sanded it lightly with uh, 320 then I put uh, the stain on let it soak in for five minutes like you like you normally do then I wiped it completely off so um, after that it did not have this rich deep color it was a very weak color because the shellac prevented the stain the full cut of shellac prevented the stain from absorbing into the wood um, a lot of the blotching was gone though but the color was still uneven so after that dried here's where the magic comes in I dipped a paper towel into a, the same color stain just got the paper towel just damp with the with the stain and then I wiped it on there very very lightly just to color it and then I did not wipe it off so the stain is sitting on top of the shellac the shellac is sitting on top of the wood and after I that dried which took uh, it takes a lot longer I let it dry a whole day then I came back with a lacquer I sprayed lacquer over it and uh, this is huge this is a game changer I think this will be a game changer for woodworkers I'm not very good at explaining things I just uh, I've been trying to I've told a couple of people on YouTube about it and I hope they make videos about it because I think it'll really help a lot of people that are when it comes to finishing wood I haven't had any rub off you know in your hands or nothing like that it's not I've been playing the heck out of it it's not rubbing off at all it hasn't chipped off but I'm gonna wait a few months I think to see if I have any problems and if I don't have any problems at that point I'm gonna go ahead and make a vid video and try to explain it the best I can and put it out there because I really think this will help a lot of people because it's a huge problem uh, for woodworkers blotching and usually you can prevent all the blotching but you don't get the deep rich color like this or you just have to live with some blotching and then you get the color you want either way uh, so anyway thanks for looking everybody uh, I think I covered all the everything I wanted to uh.